Welcome to Focus on Education. I'm Keith Fellower, Chairman of the Oak Ridge Board of Education. Beginning in 2024, each of the board members will be hosting uh, this television program produced by Oak Ridge Wildcat TV. And we're thankful to be in studio tonight, this evening. So as my guest this evening, I have the members of the Oak Ridge Board of Education. I'm honored to have them as my guests. We're going to learn a little bit more about each of us individually, uh, as opposed to perhaps when you see us uh, conducting business at our school board meetings. Unfortunately, all five of us were not able to be here. Ms. Angie Agle is not with us tonight, but I do have the other four here. So with that being said, uh, we're going to just start off uh, with a beginning question to each of you. Uh, we'll start this way and go this way first. Uh, not a, you can't use the Oak Ridge Wildcats. What's your favorite sports team? Oh, I would say the Oak Ridge Wildcats. Um, the University of Tennessee Volunteers has to be an answer. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, my favorite sports team, uh, as a graduate of the University of Chattanooga, I am a dyed in the wool alumni, even though it's the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Uh, my favorite sports team is the University of Chattanooga Moccasins, even though I am a UT fan as well because of that relationship. Okay, well, I grew up in North Carolina. I'm a Tar Heel born and a Tar Heel bred. What about the Vols? <laughs> Well, you can't live in Tennessee and not be a Vol fan, True. but um, deep down, my parents, uh, our, our Tar Heels went to University of North Carolina, and that's where I went, and my husband, and my father-in-law, and yeah, I'm deep down, I'm a Tar Heel. I get it. All right, so I'm a dual fan. I have allegiance to Auburn Tigers, always. Uh, I'm from Auburn and went to school at Auburn but also work at UT for 10 years now. So um, I would say pretty evenly split. Great, okay. We'll start down on this end this time. And the real first question, uh, just so those watching can get to know us a little bit better, tell us a little bit about your background. Um, so I did go to school at Auburn uh, for my undergrad and then went to Troy University and UAB in Alabama. Um, and so I have a, a PhD in education, um, which is one of the reasons I was interested in being on the board. Um, for the last 10 years, I've worked at UT in uh, the provost office as the associate vice provost for institutional effectiveness. And we do assessment and academic program review and course evaluations and all, all things like that. Um, and so before that, I worked for SAC COC. Um, that's the accrediting body. And before that, at another university in Georgia. OK, well, I'm, my husband and I and our two little kids moved to Tennessee from North Carolina about 30 years ago. And the kids were babies. And um, so they, um, my son started at the preschool. and. Um, they were educated all through our, um, our wonderful schools here in Oak Ridge, and I was one of those volunteers constantly helping out wherever. And um, so that was, that was my uh, trajectory here in Oak Ridge, and then I just couldn't give it up, so here I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am also not a native Oak Ridger. I was born in Cleveland, Tennessee attended Bradley County High School, and as you heard me say earlier, went to the University of Chattanooga, came to Oak Ridge in 1968 as a teacher and coach at Robertsfield, then junior high school, completed my teaching and coaching career here at Oak Ridge High School, uh, redirected from that, and we uh, now obviously serve on the Oak Ridge Board of Education. Uh, my wife, Melanie, and I have one son who is a graduate of the Oak Ridge School System. He is now Dr. Phil Auer, get to break a little bit on that. And he is a neuroclinical psychologist. He works at a hospital 
in Wallingford, Connecticut, and lives in New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, and we have one other member of our family uh, who is probably head of the household, and that is our dog, a cocker spaniel, Paisley. <laughs> I am originally from, born and raised in Oak Ridge, so I'm the, the only Oak Ridge baby, I guess. Um, born here, raised here, graduate of Oak Ridge High School, 1996. Have, um, we moved away, went to University of Tennessee, moved away. Fast forward 10 years later, plus four kids, uh, moved back to Oak Ridge, wanted my kids to experience schools here in Oak Ridge just like I did, and I know the excellence that they could expect. Um, so have that three, three of my four have graduated. I have a current um, sophomore here at Oak Ridge High School and uh, I'm a grandmother of one precious little baby girl and uh, they're being raised here in Oak Ridge as well. So I hope that she attends school in the next few years at one of the wonderful elementary schools. Great, okay. Just a little <laughs> bit about us. Uh, uh, Laura, we'll start next with you, uh, Heather alluded to this just a little bit, but we're, we'll get back to you and you can expand on it a little bit more. Why, why did you want to run for the Board of Education? What encouraged you or what uh, give you, made you make that decision to uh, run for the board? Well, I mentioned earlier that you know I had been really involved in the school system as the kids were growing up. Um, one of my neighbors, Elaine Trogger, um, was I believe the first woman city council member and um, she you know I would go visit her she was elderly and uh, reti definitely retired but I would visit her frequently with the kids and she would always talk about her time on city council and she challenged me um, to run and to serve and um, you know I thought about city council and I'm like I, I'm that's not my thing but school board really kind of spoke to me and then across the street from me um, John Smith who had served on the school board he had talked to me a while and then on down the road Mr. Phil Hour uh, was my neighbor too and um, so I had a lot of encouragement from people that I respected so uh, that's that's how I got here well, I took a little different path uh, as a classroom teacher and coach uh, for 31 years. Uh, when I left that position, I really didn't know what direction I would be going in next. But uh, then one day, a uh, knock on my front door, and it was once again the John Smith that you <laughs> talked about, said, uh, we're going to have a vacancy on the board. Uh, one of our board members' husband is being transferred and she'll be leaving. Would you be willing to run to finish that term? And I said, well, uh, let me think about it. And he said, well, let me just assure you, uh, if you do run and get elected, we only meet once a month, <laughs> which I knew that not to be true <laughs> as well. So I thought about it and I thought, well, uh, maybe I could bring something to the board as a classroom teacher, as an educator, my experience there would help with decision making and I would be able to see it not only from the view of a board member but also the view of a classroom teacher. So as I say, the rest is history. Yeah. Well, I feel like it's just a recruiting circle here because Mr. Philhauer, um, actually <laughs> Melanie, Miss <laughs> Melanie Philhauer probably gets the credit for this, is uh, we ran into each other and she said, we were thinking that you, this might be something you'd be good at or you'd be interested in. Um, I had four kids at Oak Ridge High School at the time, so, I mean not Oak Ridge High School, they were little, they were spread all over, uh, four kids in the school system, and I thought, yeah, that is something. I'm from Oak Ridge, I'm interested in what's going on, always interested in the community. Um, working at First United Methodist as a Children and Family Ministries Director at the time, it was right in my wheelhouse of kids, I'm now at the Boys and Girls Club, same wheelhouse, so it's been a very rewarding experience, but I, I wouldn't have guess that I, I wouldn't have seen myself there necessarily, but once you find out the information, it's it's fantastic. I enjoy it most of the time as well. <laughs> You've got four minutes to answer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I horribly left out my family on the last answer, so <laughs> let me say that I'm married to Cleon Hartman, uh, who's retired from Y12 here locally, and we have four children together and two grandchildren. And um, when my youngest wanted to, well, graduated from Oak Ridge High School. 
I suddenly had time on my hands. Um, we were very involved in football and boosters and a lot of activities. And so um, I wanted to continue to be involved in the community and in the schools. And this was just a good fit for me, for my background and interests. Great. Well, we're going to take a short break in just a minute or two, and we're going to come back and uh, dive a little bit deeper into uh, some questions uh, and concerns that as board members uh, we face and uh, issues that we'll be dealing with. So we'll take a time out. This is Focus on Education and we're the Oak Ridge Board of Education. Welcome back to Focus on Education. We're the Oak Ridge Board of Education and we're just talking about what we do as board members and uh, letting you get to know a little bit about ourselves. So we're going to start off with another tough question. So you're first, I think, this time. Okay. Your favorite vacation spot. Oh, favorite vacation spot. Um, I would say the beach. There's something about walking on the beach and hearing the waves. It just very peaceful. I'm not like a swim in the ocean person. Mm -hmm. There's too many things out there that can <laughs> eat you. So I, you know, I walk in the water, but that's about as far as I go. But yeah, I think um, I think the beach is probably one of my favorites. Well, I'm gonna have to copy you a little bit. I would also take the beach as long as there is a golf course. Uh -huh. in the close vicinity of that beach. Uh, we enjoy going, playing golf, coming back, and then spending the afternoon to, on the beach and the sunset. There's just nothing better, uh, except, you know, we live in an area that's such a beautiful part of the country with the mountains. Uh, it's almost like at times being on a vacation with what we have just around us. I'm obviously a very tan individual, but I love the beach um, as long as we have a big stack of books and eat a good meal. Um, just want to be out in the sun under an umbrella with a book. <laughs> so I'll be uh, four in a row. I would prefer the beach too, but uh, usually for the seafood. Mm. Uh, fresh seafood on the coast is hard to beat. So everything from Jekyll Island on, well, St. Augustine too, a lot, Charleston, whole coast there. So, but add to, and I, I agree with you on the food. Uh, one of the things I hope to be able to experience with parks now living in Connecticut is mm -hmm. in the spring and the fall, going into New England and enjoying some of that seafood mm -hmm. in that area, which I've never done before. So, look forward to Lobster. that. Lobster. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're going to go to you next. One thing people don't know about the Board of Education. Hmm. I think they, uh, there's a misconception that sometimes we, we meet and we have this list of people we hire and we fire and, and there's just this blank kind of slate and that's not what we do <laughs> at all. Um, or also that we, we maybe don't know what's going on in the schools and the schools have been very good at keeping us um, aware of, of all the wonderful things that are going on, the challenges that they're having, uh, where they can improve and where, where we need to celebrate them. So there's a lot to it. It's not a one meeting a month type situation um, and that, that there's just a lot more to it that you wouldn't know unless you're kind of in it. So that's the, the biggest misconception. And I'm going to follow up on yours a little bit. I think most people think we have numerous employees, but as the Board of Education, we actually only have one employee, and that's the superintendent is our only employee. We hire and can fire the superintendent. We cannot hire and fire our staff members. Uh, that's not our responsibility. So I think that's also one thing that most people really don't know about the Board of Education. Yeah, you guys just took my answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I think that a lot of people think that we are down in the weeds and know everything and are aware of everything and making rules about everything. And we are like way up here making policy 
but we're not, you know, making very, very specific rules about things in, in each of the schools. I would also add that if you attend a school board meeting that you might be under the impression that we always agree on everything and everything is just a given, you know, red stamp, red, what, rubber stamp rubber kind of thing. Um, so it isn't. Um, we get notified via email that resources are ready to review and then we can look through what used to be our paper packet, I guess, but now is online. Um, to see what's coming up at the meeting, what proposals are coming, and we can review those. And if we have questions, um, contact the superintendent and talk with him about our questions. And so by the time we get to the meeting, we've already researched everything and asked questions and had those answered. So um, it's not that we're just like, okay, yes, 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 you know, um, that we've actually studied things and had conversation about them, not with each other, but with the superintendent. Anything else anybody wants to add? Those are all good points. Uh, I think one thing, uh, Laurie, kind of you touched on this as well. I think people sometimes think the policies that we have are policies that, as a board, we've sat down around the table and we've decided these are the policies that, as a school district, we should have. Now, within our policies, there are some of those policies that have been developed through our school district, but the majority of our policies come to us by state or federal law, primarily state laws that have been passed. And we have to see that those are enacted into our policies and carried out through our policies in our school district. So I think that's probably one thing too that a lot of people think, well, they sit around and make all these decisions. And I would add, too, the school board does not decide when school is closed for snow. <laughs> uh, we do not out. make that decision. Uh, our superintendent, uh, executive directors, our maintenance supervisor, they're out driving and looking long before most people are up. Uh, to try to make that right decision. And it's a difficult decision, one of the most difficult decisions that administratively I think the superintendent and his staff have to make. I think 4 a.m. is when they said yeah. they hit the road to yeah. uh, drive around to see how, how, how our roads are looking. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's an early day for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this next question, we may be in agreement with some of these, but uh, we'll see where it goes. Uh, the next question for us is, one issue currently facing the Board of Education, and I think it's your turn first. Okay. Um, I like being first. Um, I, I think that our, our community is growing, and we have lots of new homes in Oak Ridge, and um, with those new homes comes new families and new kids. And I think um, our schools are growing, and I think overcrowding is looming, and so we need to plan and be looking ahead because we can't build a new school overnight and we can't add on to our schools overnight. It's gonna take some forward thinking. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That was my answer. <laughs> I had a feeling that might be all of our answers, yeah. Yeah. But just based on what yeah. we've been dealing with and what what's on our plate, I, I kind of thought maybe that would creep in with all of yeah, us. Yeah, I mean, I can add that we're talking with the city council about the issue already, um, and that we'll continue to talk with them and, and I think try to get something concrete moving in the direction of progress. Agree, agree, agree. <laughs> you knew we would all agree on this. Uh, with all the homes that are being built, um, and, and people coming into Oak Ridge and nobody leaving, they're, they're young families and I see it directly every day too with after school care and, and there, there are a lot of things that go with that that need to be addressed of just looking ahead before we're too far behind. Mm -hmm. And I would uh, throw out, uh, I, I would first on a positive note have to say that there are changes that have been made to public education in Tennessee that are very positive. We all have concerns about current legislation that's being talked about in Nashville that may have an impact on public education. 
I think that's an issue that we're going to be concerned about. Uh, certainly, we could talk about uh, the governor's proposal for increased use of vouchers. We, as a board of education, do not support that for public education. But funding issues uh, and, and things that are being discussed, we just have to make sure to do the best that we can to enable our state legislators to understand where we're coming from, the importance of the trickle down, if you will, to the legislation that is passed. And not only legislation that is passed, but the unintended consequences sometimes of legislation that is passed and the impact it has on public education. Okay, here's the next question that you didn't know was coming. The best thing about the Oak Ridge schools. There are a lot of them, and not to put you on the spot, so I'll go first. Okay. And then you can think. Uh, there are a lot of very important things that go to make Oak Ridge education positive. I think one thing that we would always have to put in the top five is our teaching staff. Uh, without their creativity, without their dedication, uh, they certainly don't come and punch a time clock to work. Uh, when I was coming in at about 5.30 to do this show, I noticed several staff members leaving at that time. So they're here all the time, and they're always working for the benefit of the students. So that's in the top five. Well, maybe I'll rephrase that question a little bit and say something about Oak Ridge Schools that makes Oak Ridge schools what they are that are in the top five, and we won't rank them as one through five, but it's in there. So, who wants to go next? I'll go. Okay. Um, okay, so one thing that I've learned a lot about uh, since being on the board is the innovation at Oak Ridge schools. Uh, we've got some really great um, sort of programs and, and offerings that are not commonly offered. For instance, the um, air uh, simulator for flying in the middle schools. I mean, we're doing things that you couldn't even imagine years ago, and um, I think it's phenomenal. We've got great grant writers, and so a lot of these things are paid for uh, with federal money or other monies and, and don't cost the school system, um, but, but are great opportunities for the students, and so that's very exciting. Um. Well, we visited uh, Glenwood mm -hmm. this morning, and I will say I was in a second grade classroom, and there was a teacher that was working one-on-one -on -one with a student, and the student was reading, um, and the teacher was helping him, but he was reading, and the teacher was so excited, and the child was so excited, and later on, I asked her about it, and she said that child had started Oak Ridge Schools this year, and he wasn't reading. And in six months, or not even six months, yeah. she, you know, has taught him to read. We, as a system, have taught him to read and opened up so many opportunities for him. And just to see her excitement and see his excitement, it's just priceless. And the opportunities for success, you know, when it's, it's the staff, the staff hands down are the best thing about Oak Ridge Schools. From, from everybody, support staff, teachers, custodians, lunch helpers, it, uh, parents, PTOs, PTAs, everybody um, is amazing. But also the fact that when you graduate Oak Ridge High School, you have a career path. You can start working, you can go to college, you can have technical um, certifications. There is, it is just success is laid in front of the kids and they're so, so fortunate. And I get jealous when we do the school visits of like, it was wonderful when I went to school here, but now it's just beyond imagination. We, we are very, very lucky, very lucky in Oak Ridge. Yeah. Absolutely. Final question. <clears throat> Within the last year, your favorite movie that you've seen or enjoyed in the big screen theater or on TV? I'll give you all time to think. I'll go first. Boys in the Boat. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. If you haven't, you should. It's it's a very entertaining, enjoyable movie. Who wants to jump in? I just saw Boys on the Boat just a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> it's a good one. And since since we're such a rowing community, yes. um, I, I highly recommend it. 
All right, I haven't seen that, but Oppenheimer was amazing and, uh, of course, won awards. So. Yeah, they took a number of awards at the Golden Globes yes. just recently. I, I do not have time to go to the movie theater. <laughs> I um, stream old, like, 80s and shows. And that's nothing wrong with I'm, that. I'm watching Dallas. I'm on season nine right now. So <laughs> go. Be jealous. <laughs> well, that closes our segment for tonight. Uh, I will close by saying a couple of things. Uh, it's an honor to work with the other members of this board. Uh, they have the interest of public education in their heart. Uh, they are dedicated to what they do. Uh, you would be surprised of the amount of time that they spend, we all spend, in trying to give every student in Elk Ridge the opportunities that they deserve to be successful. And Ms. Webb will be hosting Sam Putner on the spot here. <laughs> she just agreed to it a few minutes ago, but she will be hosting Focus on Education in February. And thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for your support of the Oak Ridge Schools. And we look forward to seeing you in our schools supporting public education. Good evening. <laughs>